dear students welcome to ugc epg patashala on human rights and duties my name is professor ysr murthy i am the executive director of the center for human rights studies op general global university in the unit on national mechanisms for protection and enforcement of human rights we will take up today the module on the activities of the national human rights commission in the earlier modules we saw the six paris principles and we also saw the protection of human rights act 1993 in earlier modules we have seen the six paris principles upon which uh, the national human rights commission should be founded and we have also seen the various provisions of the protection of human rights act and in the last module an introduction to the national human rights commission was given and in particular i have explained uh, the complaints handling function if you see section 12 of the protection of human rights act 1993 it enters the commission with a range of functions including redressal of individual complaints of human rights violations intervention in court proceedings involving human rights violations visits to jails mental hospitals or other institutions and to make recommendations for uh, better uh, protection of human rights there review laws constitutional safeguards or international conventions and make recommendations thereon undertake or promote research spread human rights literacy and awareness encourage the efforts of non governmental organizations and review the factors which impede the enjoyment of human rights so a national human rights commission is supposed to work on several legs and in this module we will take up some of its activities uh, in order to illustrate how the commission fulfills the various statutory responsibilities which have been uh, uh, given to the commission at the end of this module students will learn about the wide ranging activities that are within the official mandate of the national human rights commission and you will also be in a position to understand the nature of activities performed by the commission under each function mandated by protection of human rights act 1993 in section 12 and the students will also in a be in a position to understand the significant role of the commission in protection and promotion of human rights in india and at the end of the module you will also appreciate the various achievements and uh, challenges in 1993 the commission was established for better protection and promotion of human rights in india and then as you have seen section 12 of the act provides for a wide ranging functions 12a states that the commission can inquire either suo moto or based on a petition or based on a direction by the court uh, into a violation of human rights committed by a public servant and also intervention in uh, uh, pending court proceedings before a court of law with its approval if the same involves any allegation as to violation of human rights the commission is required to review and report the conditions of jail mental hospital or any other institution where persons have been uh, um, detained or lodged for treatment protection and uh, uh, reformation and the commission nhrc is required to review and recommend steps for the effective implementation of Uh, human rights conventions and the commission is required to review various causes like terrorism poverty uh, etc which impede the enjoyment of human rights and the commission is also uh, um, uh, has a statutory responsibility to undertake or promote research of in um, uh, international uh, um, uh, research in Uh, various uh, human rights issues 
and it has been uh, uh, taking uh, uh, in pursuance a number of actions. The Commission is also required to spread human rights literacy and awareness among the general public and NHRC is required to encourage the efforts of non-governmental organizations and other uh, institutions. Now let's look at the complaint redressal in little more detail. A complaint may be made in any uh, language recognized by the constitution and once the commission receives a complaint in an Indian language, it shall on its own get it translated and then take it up for uh, uh, further action and the complaint can be made by a victim or any other person on his or her behalf and it can be submitted through post, fax, email or online and it, uh, there is a provision in the NHRC website for submission of complaints and one can even make urgent complaints um, uh, either during the working hours or outside the working hours. At the National Human Rights Commission, a facilitation counter uh, called Madad has been uh, set up for uh, uh, providing assistance uh, to the uh, complainants and the one uh, uh, complainant can you know uh, uh, track the status of his complaint from the website uh, where there is a provision made for uh, uh, tracking the uh, complaints and what actions have been taken to redress the complaints. Uh, when the moment the commission receives a complaint it can either dismiss the complaint if it does not fall under its jurisdiction under the Protection of Human Rights Act or it can dispose the complaint uh, by providing directions to the authorities concerned. The commission can also transfer the complaint to the concerned state human rights commission to handle it and uh, uh, provide redress and uh, the commission can also make other recommendations to the authorities uh, concerned. Now, Section 12B of the Protection of Human Rights Act provides for the intervention of the National Human Rights Commission in a pending court proceeding with the permission of that court. In pursuance of Section 12B, NHRC intervened in several proceedings and which have led to the effective and speedy uh, remedial measures and uh, here in this module we will take up some examples of NHRC's uh, intervention in pending court proceedings. For instance, there was a Charanjit Singh, he was a mentally challenged under trial prisoner held in Delhi and he filed an application before the Delhi, in this case, uh, in response to the conditions of Charanjit Singh, NHRC filed an application before the Delhi High Court seeking quashing of the trial and uh, the High Court uh, indeed allowed the intervention and uh, later on asked the NHRC to develop uh, uh, detailed guidelines on how to handle such uh, 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 cases. And in the case, you know, uh, um, um, here is a mentally challenged prisoner who has uh, spent uh, uh, over 50 years in prison and he was never produced before the court since August 1967. And in the case of this mentally ill prisoner uh, held in uh, Assam, the commission uh, recommended to the government of Assam to release him with immediate effect and as a result of the intervention by the NHRC, the Supreme Court in another matter took cognizance of this case and ordered the government to pay uh, uh, him due compensation of the 3 lakh rupees. Now here is a, a very very important case concerning mass cremation in Punjab. Um, Non-governmental organization brought to the attention of the Supreme Court mass cremation of over 2,997 dead bodies uh, uh, which have been cremated as unidentified dead bodies and Supreme Court ordered an inquiry by the Central Bureau of Investigation, CBI, into this case and once it received the CBI report, the Supreme Court Ref, uh, referred the matter to the NHRC for adjudication of compensation and after going through an elaborate process and hearings, the commission recommended a sum of nearly 26 crores as monetary relief in respect of uh, many persons who have been identified uh, 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 and who have been cremated uh, in an illegal manner. Now, 
In response to complaints of human rights violations in Bastar district of uh, Chhattisgarh, the NHRC directed its investigation division officers to go across to the state and uh, protect the violation of, uh, um, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, redress the violation of human rights. And there was a police hostility against the representatives of civil society, academicians and journalists. And uh, the reaction of the government also was a, a cause for concern. And the NHRC therefore directed uh, the Chhattisgarh government to have a provision for training, awareness and orientation program for the police force. And commission ordered that clear and separate entry relating to human rights violations shall be made a part of the annual assessment report of civil servants in Chhattisgarh. And seven human rights protection committees have been directed to be set up in Chhattisgarh. Now let us take up conditions of jail, mental health institutions or any other institutions. Under section 12C of the Protection of Human Rights Act, the NHRC has a statutory responsibility to visit prisons and other such institutions where persons are lodged for uh, or detained or lodged for treatment or reformation. And the NHRC has been visiting various jails and monitoring the conditions ever since. It has made surprise visits to jails and found that uh, about 70% of the prison deaths are on account of tuberculosis. So based on this uh, empirical evidence, the commission evolved a pro forma. And then this pro forma or format has been made available to various authorities. And uh, it asks the state governments to conduct a medical examination and uh, uh, report back on the uh, steps to the state government, uh, to the commission. And all states were asked to check inmates for tuberculosis and take remedial measures. The commission also visited, among others, the jails in Agra, Mujafarnagar, Basti, and Meerut, Kanpur, and the number goes on and on. And there are these are only a list of uh, um, illustrative uh, jails. And in each such uh, uh, case, the commission made detailed recommendations for protection of human rights of inmates held in these jails. In the case of Muktaram Sitaram Shinde versus State of Maharashtra, the commission was asked to follow the order of the High Court and then the commission uh, therefore appointed uh, uh, members uh, who are uh, uh, supposed to work as non-official visitors. And uh, the main problem was in these jails was the overcrowding, especially in states like Chhattisgarh, Dadra Nagar, uh, Haveli, Andaman, and where there is a sanctioned capacity, but in practice, one finds that uh, there is a overcrowding, and as a result of that, uh, consequent uh, human rights violations. And the commission also took up the status of mental health institutions in a big manner and had a, a research study conducted on the quality assurance in mental health. And of course, Agra, in the case of Agra Protective Home, the Supreme Court entrusted the functioning of three mental hospitals in Agra, Gwalior, and Ranchi, and Agra Protective Home to the Commission for monitoring. Pursuant to the Supreme Court order, NHRC has been regularly visiting these Agra, Ranchi, Gwalior mental hospitals and as well as the Agra protective home to observe the conditions in these institutions on the spot and make recommendations and the visits made by the commission's special rapporteurs, the commission's officials, the commission's members have led to several positive improvements on the ground. Now let us look at uh, a review of legislative bills and acts from a human rights perspective. The commission can, under section 12E of the Protection of Human Rights Act, can review either draft bills or acts which have been enacted by the parliament. And under this, the commission reviewed over 35 legislations. They include, among others, the Child Marriage Restraint Act 1929. And in this context of the Child Marriage Restraint Act, 
the commission asked the government to reframe some of the provisions to provide for higher penalty and make the offense of child marriage cognizable and non-bailable. And the NHRC also recommended that provision should be included to penalize uh, associations which you know promote such child marriages. All religious and civil marriages should be registered which is a far-reaching recommendation and the NHRC uh, recommended that uh, the contract of marriage shall be made voidable at the option of the minor. Now, what about the Protection of Human Rights Act 1993 under which NHRC itself was established? The commission requested a former Chief Justice of India, Justice Ahmadi, to go into the act and um, uh, asked him to suggest a number of recommendations. Based on that, um, the commission made a series of uh, uh, suggestions to the government for amendments to the Protection of Human Rights Act. In the case of Freedom of Information Bill, the commission examined it in at some length and then asked the government to change it, the nomenclature to the Right to Information Bill. And in, um, the commission uh, uh, also recommended that uh, the preamble should be changed to provide for freedom to access information to a bill which provides for a system through which people can access their right provided by the constitution. The commission also recommended re-examination of the provisions contained in section 8 against permissible restrictions and under article 19. These have since been uh, uh, accepted and now let us look at uh, uh, monitoring the implementation of international treaties. Under the section 12 of the Protection of Human Rights Act, the commission has the power or the responsibility to review international human rights conventions and make recommendations to the government of India. And for instance, the commission, the, as soon as the two protocols to the Convention on the Rights of a Child were adopted, the commission recommended that both optional protocol one and two dealing with child pornography, child prostitution, sale, and trafficking of children and children armed conflict be examined properly by the government and uh, commended them for uh, adoption by the Indian government. This recommendation has since been accepted. And uh, additional protocols to Geneva Conventions, 1949, uh, the NHRC recommended to the government of India to review and comment upon its stand on the 1977 additional protocols to the four Geneva Conventions uh, dealing with uh, human rights in times of armed conflict and uh, protection of victims in such armed conflict. And this dialogue between the Commission and the Government of India is going on. And now here is a, an important convention, which is the Convention Against Torture, Cruel, Inhuman, Degrading Treatment or Punishment. In this case, the Commission asked the government to ratify this convention and in response to NHRC recommendation, the government of India signed it in the year 1997. Of course, the ratification is yet to happen and then um, the government of India is in the currently in the process of drafting a domestic legislation to uh, 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 ratify this convention. And the NHRC said the government's failure or delay in ratification of this uh, uh, torture convention has affected our capacity to secure extradition of number of required criminals from abroad. The commission also took up the convention relating to the status of refugees and the optional protocol uh, uh, thereon. And then the commission recommended that there is a need for a comprehensive legislation which will deal with the situation of refugees. Now, let's turn our attention to the spreading of human rights, literacy, awareness, etc. Under Section 12H of the Protection of Human Rights Act, NHRC is required to conduct conferences, seminars, workshops, training, and, and use media for you know, spreading human rights, literacy, and awareness. And in pursuance, NHRC has been organizing all these activities. It has also been imparting training on human rights to uh, cross-section of civil servants. Uh, it's or, it has been organizing 
training of trainers programs and it has been training on human rights issues relating to women, children, uh, uh, and then uh, rights of the disabled, rights of the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, rights of detainees, and these trainings have their own value and they have, a, uh, um, they can change the consciousness, they can change the uh, uh, um, mindsets. NHRC also has been trying to develop curriculum for education of human rights at school level and graduation level. As a result of its efforts, NCRT has developed a guidebook and even at the uh, uh, higher education level, certain things have been developed and for developed for teacher training as well. In fact, uh, in the year 2012-13 annual report, the commission reported that over 114 training programs, workshops and seminars were conducted. These include, um, uh, to give you a, a small sample or a flavor, like a conference on accountability and disaster addiction. And then there's a conference on right to food and workshop on bonded and child labor. In fact, these workshops on bonded child labor have been organized over the years to sensitize the authorities concerned in various states. And there's a conference on missing children to discuss the compliance with NHRC's earlier guidelines on this subject. NHRC submits from time to time annual reports to the government and under the section 1220 of the Protection of Human Rights Act, the government is required to place the NHRC's annual report before the parliament along with a, an action taken report on the commission's recommendations. And the government is also required uh, to give reasons in case if it has not accepted any of the recommendations made by the commission. Now let's turn our attention to research projects and programs uh, initiated by the commission. Under section 12G of the Protection of Human Rights Act, uh, the NHRC is required to undertake or promote research studies and uh, in fact uh, in pursuance of this statutory responsibility the commission has been conducting research studies um, either by itself or uh, it has been commissioning various universities, non-governmental organizations and other technical institutions and through them it has been trying to conduct uh, uh, the research on human rights issues and these research projects help in creating a network system in the country which says facilitates protection and promotion of human rights. They also contribute to a culture of human rights. And now let me give you a list of some completed research studies by NHRC to enable to you to appreciate the kind of issues that have been taken up under the research mandate like for instance, role of civil administration in the protection of human rights in strife torn areas of Jammu and Kashmir. And the second, underlying the causes of human rights violations as a result of um, insurgency in Northeast, uh, the nature of state response, the use of um, special laws and violations by non-state actors, by state actors, and also uh, practical recommendations, suggestions. Uh, in fact, this uh, was uh, conducted in the state of Tripura, and uh, detailed recommendations were made for improvement in the situation. The third research study was on dependency on forests for livelihood and its impact on environment, and it was a case study of uh, Baiga tribe of Mandla district in Madhya Pradesh. This has since been completed. And the fourth project is about the plight of mentally ill persons languishing in Chamatkari Hanumanji temple in Chindwara district of Madhya Pradesh. And this project has also been completed. Fifth, economic, social, cultural rights, uh, a, a study to assess the promotion of economic, social, and cultural rights uh, in India. 
uh, this was entrusted to the National Center for Advocacy Studies in Pune. And then there is a research project on estimating precise costs and providing level playing field to persons with disabilities. There are, in addition to these completed research projects, there are a number of other projects of the commission which are ongoing. These relate to a study on prevailing right to food situation among the below poverty line families in Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. Human rights of elderly persons, law, policies, and uh, implementation, a study with special reference to Kerala. And then there is a research project on country assessment, national inquiry on human rights in the context of sexual and reproductive health care and well-being. The NHRC also has commissioned a study on human rights of transgender as a third gender. The project on the human rights issues related to right to education of children of migrant laborers in Kerala was given. Interrogating violence against women, the other side, uh, an exploratory study uh, into the world of uh, uh, perpetrators. Uh, this project was also uh, uh, initiated. And then there is a national research study on human trafficking, which has been assigned to the Tata Institute of Social Sciences. Work is underway under each of these research projects. And then uh, let's send our attention to the Commission's efforts in the case of relief and rehabilitation in the case of natural calamities. The NHRC has taken several initiatives for safeguarding situations in case of natural disasters. Some of them are given below. For instance, uh, it ordered the state government of Orissa to review uh, the public distribution system. It ordered uh, in the wake of a super cyclone, it monitored the relief provided by the state government and to so that the needs of the most uh, um, vulnerable are not uh, 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 violated. The commission ordered Orissa government to adopt relief measures for the uh, uh, victims of 2001 super cyclone and the NHRC also uh, uh, took cognizance of the 2001 earthquake that affected the state of Gujarat. It monitored the relief measures that were uh, taken by the government uh, uh, for uh, um, the people who have been you know, affected by the uh, uh, tsunami that struck the southern states of India in the year 2004. Now, to sum up, in pursuance of the mandate provided by Section 12 of the Protection of Human Rights Act, the National Human Rights Commission has been undertaking a wide range of functions, which we have seen in the earlier part of the lecture, including redressal of individual complaints, intervention in court proceedings, review of laws, uh, review of conditions in uh, prisons, mental hospitals, review of international uh, conventions and uh, constitutional safeguards and laws and uh, spreading of human rights literacy and awareness and encouraging the efforts of non-governmental organizations. So in the last 23 years or so, the NHRC uh, had been uh, performing these functions uh, with the uh, dedication and uh, uh, the, some of the results are uh, visible uh, to everyone and uh, there is of course a lot more that needs to be done and uh, thank you.